Income tax 2022-2023 business use of your home tax software example. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Here we are in our example form 1040 populated with Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the form 1040 related forms and schedules at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting point, single filer, Mr. Anderson living in Beverly Hills, 90210. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. No W-2 income because we've got the business income coming in from the Schedule C. Let's see that flow through process. Go into the Schedule C, profit or loss from business, income statement format, income minus expenses, the net income in essence going into the Schedule 1. Going from the Schedule 1 to the Form 1040 line number 8. We're going to have to pay self-employment tax on that income. Let's see how that works. It goes from the Schedule C, bottom line, net income flowing into the schedule se self-employment tax calculating that at 14 129 that's social security and medicare we're going to go into the schedule two that's right there flows in 14 129 flows into the form 1040 page number two not the income tax but other taxes down here 14 129 the self-employment tax half of that's deductible on page one of the form 1040 right there we could see that flow through by going to the schedule c net income being used to calculate the self-employment tax of that 14 129 half of it 7065 flowing into schedule uh, number one page number two right there and that flows into the form 1040 right here so now we've got the hundred thousand minus the seven thousand sixty five gives us the ninety two nine thirty five minus the twelve thousand nine fifty standard deduction and the fifty nine nine eight which is the qualified business income calculated by the software at this time gives us the sixty three nine eight eight taxable income tax calculated on page number two nine thousand nine uh, nine thousand six ninety two for the income tax and the 14129 for the self-employment tax gets us to the 23821 total tax. We're imagining we paid 30,000 for a difference of 6,179. Our focus now on the Schedule C, imagining we now have the business use of the home. So the general scenario is we've got our own sole proprietor type of business. We have our home, which we might be renting or we might be purchased. We might have purchased the home. In either case, we use part of the home for business use. So we can imagine we have an office in some way, shape or form, some designated space that we're using within the home. Now, you would think that we would get to deduct part of the costs that are applicable to the business use of the home, considering the fact that uh, it's you had to consume that business use in order to generate revenue. The problem, that many of the expenses that you have are going to be for the entire home so they're personal and business therefore we need to be breaking out the business versus personal portion how could you do that well we can do that possibly with a ratio kind of scenario meaning we can take the square footage of the business use and divide that by the square footage of the total home and get a ratio a percent in essence that we can then uh, allocate these costs by we can use the form uh, 8829 which we will take a look at let's open that up we can also use by the way a simplified method which may be okay to use but may be low as well depending on where you live if you live in like a high cost of living area you're likely not going to want to use the simplified method because your your 
cost of living is going to be higher and so that might be short also note that the deduction is flowing down here and that's kind of an indication that and the reason they might do that or put it down here as opposed to up top is because there could be limitations in terms of how much you can deduct in the event that you have a loss uh, situation so if you have a loss remember that if you have a loss here that could pull to page one of the 1040 and be deductible against other income such as w-2 income if you had any and that could cause you know issues the iris is skeptical of that so you might have limitations with regards to the losses okay so let's go ahead and and open up the form 8829 so i'm going to open that one up let's find that over here so here's the basic layout we've got the form 8829 business uh expenses for business use of the home home part one part of your home used for business and then you figure your allowable deduction notice the two categories we have here the direct expenses and uh the indirect expenses for the business use of the home let's jump on over let's see if i can do a jumping format here and go to the business use of the home okay so so if we're going to use the percentage square footage method what we would basically need to do is say okay the business use of the home i'll, I'll pull up my trusty ruler and map out the square footage of the business area and let's say that that comes out to uh let's say that comes out to 700 let's say let's say 300 and the total area of the home which you might be able to find when you purchase the home the square footage you might be able to look it up online and see what the like square footage of of the home is but you have to find the square footage of the home if you're renting obviously you can you could you could look at the rental uh, agreement possibly to find the square footage of the home or look up online for the standard unit size of the home and whatnot so we've got our two major categories the indirect expenses and the direct expenses so the general idea would be if it's an indirect expense we're paying for something like the utility bill for example on the entire home and part of it should be allocated to the business use and that's when we're going to have to use that percentage kind of method to do that if it's a direct expense that might be something that we're paying for directly to the office so for example if we're paying like repairs and maintenance for like the entire roof of the building, then you would think that you would have to use an indirect method and you would have to allocate it between the business and personal. But if you're doing repairs and maintenance for the actual office itself, then, then you don't have to do the allocation method because you're repairing the actual office, which is full business use in, in that case. So that's the general idea. Note that up top, we've got the mortgage interest and the real estate taxes now and this and the uh, state mortgage interest now these are going to be deductions if you have the purchase of the home and they also become more confusing because you may be able to deduct these items on the schedule a if you're taking the itemized deduction so then you got to think about whether or not they should be allocated between itemized deductions and the uh, business deductions if you're not taking them on the schedule a then you would think that you might get a benefit from them on uh, the business side because you're not taking them on the schedule a because possibly you have standard deductions that you're taking as opposed to itemized but if someone owns a home usually that's one of the big items that pushes people over from the standard deduction to uh, taking the itemized deduction and then you run into that issue also mortgage interest from an itemized deduction schedule a standpoint is could be limited if the loan is over a, a certain threshold which could further complicate things usually would only happen on more wealthy individuals same with state taxes for example which are capped on the itemized deductions i think at like ten thousand. so then again that kind of complicates things uh, as well with the state taxes but let's first think about the the renting situation because i think that's a little bit easy easier so you've got uh insurance miscellaneous the rent let's say we're paying rent and let's say that that's going to be let's just pick a number of twenty thousand in rent now the the repairs and maintenance this would be if the repairs and maintenance were on the entire home like the roof of the entire home and i need to allocate them between the two so let's say that's 1200 utilities let's say that's 700 uh on the whole home and excess mortgage interest state excess more uh 
excess real estate taxes and other items. And then on, on the direct items, mortgage interest, uh, real estate taxes, if they were directly applied to the office, which would be a little bit more unusual, you know, on those two items. Casualty losses, insurance for the office itself, miscellaneous rent for just the office, that would be a little bit unusual. Repairs and maintenance, it's likely that you might be able to do repairs and maintenance just on the office maybe. So maybe I fixed something in the office for like $300. I don't have to allocate that between personal and business because I repaired my home, but it was to the office itself. Utilities, if you were able to somehow figure the utilities or, or break them out to, to have it just for the office portion without using the indirect method, but usually you would have to use the indirect method, excess mortgage, uh, excess real estate taxes, casualty losses. So let's keep it at that. And let's start there and let's see what we get. So then I'm going to pull this on over and let's just check out what it populated here for the form. So part one, part of your home used for business. So we've got the 300 area used regularly and exclusively for business. And then the total area of the home we're saying was the 1200. If I pull out the trusty calculator, there's the trusty calculators to, to come to save the day. 300 divided by 12,000 is uh, 0.25%, right? So then we're gonna say, all right, that's gonna be our ratio. It's a little low on the ratio, but we'll say that's gonna be it. So then we've got the the 2.5% uh, and then the amount of the Schedule C. So it's gonna pull this over from the Schedule C because it's trying to see if there's gonna be a limitation. And then up top, we've got the casualty losses, deductible mortgage interest and the real estate taxes, but we're focused down here on these items. We have the direct expenses and the indirect expenses. So for the direct expenses, the ones that we can apply directly to the office itself, we put that $300 in for the repairs and maintenance that we imagined on the office. The rent, however, indirect, same with the repairs and maintenance for the whole, for the roof of the home we imagined and the utilities for the whole home that comes up to the 21,900. And so then we have multiply 23 column B by line by line seven, which is our percent, which would make sense. So the indirect items are, are the 21,900 times the 0 0.025. That gives us our 548 uh, about. So that 548 is the uh, portion of the indirect indirect attack parallel attack direct attack. To items and then we're gonna we're gonna add that plus the 300 the 300 and because that's the direct that we get and that comes about to uh 848 that flows into the schedule c notice it's not in the normal kind of deductions up top but rather down below down here and that's going to be then populate into the 99 one fifth, uh, 152, which ultimately, of course, pulls over to the form 1040 uh, here. So that's the general idea of it. Now, if you own the home, it becomes a little bit more complex because then you've got the mortgage interest and possibly depreciation that you have to deal with. So just to give you an idea of why that's a little bit more complex, it's because I'm not gonna have the rent here. The rest might be somewhat the same but then i've got like the mortgage interest so let's say the mortgage interest was i'm going to pick a high you know fairly twenty thousand to try to also think about what would happen on the schedule a and then i'm going to say the the real estate taxes let's say were seven thousand so now when i pull that over notice what's happened here i'm on the form 8829 and i've got that populated up top here so now it's in this area where i've got the twenty thousand and the 7,000 adding to the 27,000. But then I have this little worksheet, which is telling me the allocation between the Schedule A and the Form 8829. Why did that come into play? Remember before when I went to the Form 1040, we were taking the standard deduction as opposed to the itemized deductions. The things that usually kick people over to take in the itemized deduction is own in a home because you possibly most likely have a loan on that and the mortgage interest could be deductible as an itemized deductions as well as the property taxes. So if I go to the Schedule A now 
what it did is it basically populated now into this area for the taxes that were paid. And so now we've got uh, this, the state and local real estate taxes are being allocated here. It's using an allocation method to do to allocate here. And then we've got the interest, which is being allocated here. Now that gets quite confusing when you do the data input, because if you were to try to look at this and say, well, where did this data input come from? You would be jumping to the, the schedule A. You'd be going, all right, where's my itemized deductions? And I would be going into the schedule A and say, where's my interest over here? And there's nothing in the data input field for the interest. Why? Because we put, we put it over here in the form 8829 so it can properly allocate the interest to the schedule A and the, and the home business use in accordance with the ratio. So that gets messy. Also note that again, if you did hit the limits for the amount of mortgage interest that you can deduct because of the loan thresholds, that could complicate things. Although that's a little bit unusual, but what's more common is that if your income goes above the $10,000 threshold, which is typically deductible on the taxes over here for the state taxes, that can complicate things. Uh, a little bit as well. But in any case, you get the idea that you would think that you would have to basically allocate between the Schedule A and the Form 8829. If you're taking a Schedule A deduction, if you're not taking the Schedule A deduction, then maybe that's not as applicable because you're not going to be you're not going to be uh, itemizing. So if you're still under and taking the standard deduction, then you'd be in a similar kind of situation as the rent. Okay, so then you know that calc so in that case we see that that is calculation that calculation is up top taking place here instead of instead of basically uh down here but everything else is somewhat similar the allocation as you can see is if i took the twenty thousand of interest for example twenty thousand of interest times the 0 0.025 that's where we're getting the 500 that's being allocated to the to the 8829 and then the 20,000 of interest minus that 500 the 500 is where the rest is getting allocated to the schedule a the 19 uh, 500 which we just saw on the schedule a similar kind of thing for the property taxes we would expect all right so the other thing that gets confusing if you own the home is that what you don't get on the schedule a remember remember that the schedule a by the way is weird for these taxes so the taxes and the interest why do i get to deduct this interest it's on a personal thing if i wasn't using it for business that's a weird thing to have so it kind of muddies our thinking of what deductions kind of normally are but usually you wouldn't get a deduction for the home because the home is for personal use so but so it, but if we bought the home as a, an office, if we bought an office building, in other words, we would be able to depreciate the cost of the office building. So I would, so then you would think, well, I would should be able to depreciate the portion of my home that I'm using as an office. So that's, a, that's the other thing that kind of muddies things up. Now, the other thing that kind of muddies things up with depreciation is that it'll also possibly adjust your, your cost or basis in the home. So when you sell the home, it'll, it'll make that could make that more complicated because it could lower your basis resulting in a higher gain and and that gets uh, another thing that could get a little confusing but let's put the home on the books and depreciate it okay so if you're putting the depreciable home on the books you've got to be careful in terms of what's going to be the cost of the home because it, you might have your business that started after so now you got to think about what the basis basically of the home is and that kind of stuff and make sure that you've got the method of depreciation correct and that kind of thing but let's just get the general concept here because the general idea would be that we put the depreciation on the books now we have a depreciation schedule it's the basis I said was 300,000 in the home, 2.5 business in accordance with the ratio that we used. So that means the, the depreciation is, uh, basis is gonna be 7,000, 7,500. And then it's using the straight line mid month 27.5. I'm gonna get to the 261, which now pulls into our expenses for business use and so now that's going to be added here at uh, the the 261. So that also 
gets quite a lot more complicated than just kind of allocating the rent uh, over. And like I say, it gets a little bit complicated to figure the basis of the home and the out and then to and then to think about what that's going to have on an effect on your basis in the home if you sell the home and that kind of stuff at a future point. But that's the general idea. Okay, so now let, let's go back to the renting situation because it's an easier situation, I think, and then think about what if we had a loss and then the simplified method. So I've changed it now. So we're back to like renting instead of owning the home, no depreciation. We just got the, the rent here in our calculation coming out to the uh, 848 that's pulling over to the Schedule C on down below. So let's say that we had a loss on the Schedule C. So I'm gonna to go to the Schedule C and say, okay, let's say that the Schedule C is like a break even. Almost break even. But with it before the business home. So 120,000. So, so now I've got 120 minus the 120 and nothing's happening with regards to the the business use of the home because it basically restricted it and you can see that over here on the form 8826 same form is being populated and calculated but it restricted it and down here on part four carryover of unallowed expenses to 2023 next year operating expenses subtract line uh 27 from 26 if less than zero so there it is pulling over let's say we had just a little bit of income Let's say the income, let's add like, let's, let's, let's remove like 200 here and just to nail this point home and go to the schedule C. So now you've got, this was the income before the home use of the office. And now it's allowing, you know, the 200 here and that's bringing us back down to zero, the general idea. So you can see what is happening uh, conceptually. So now it's limited by the 200 and now the carryover is the 648. All right, now this time I forced it to use the simplified method and you can see it comes out to be far worse using the simplified method. So if I scroll down, I said, I just used the simplified method. So now we've got the simplified method, enter the total square footage of your home. We said was the 12,000 and be the part of your home for business use is uh, the 300 use the simplified method and so on which i believe is just taking that 300 times the five dollars and then multiplying time times well hold on it's being limited let me go back on over here and say let's bring our let's bring our income back up so we can get a fair comparison here that's not fair that's not fair the way you did it Twenty thousand. Okay, and then, so now we've got our income back on the board. Okay, so there we go. So now, now the simplified method is the 300 times five, right? So 300 times the $5, the 1,500, it's not being limited. The 300 just being the square footage in essence of the office. Now this is actually coming out to be higher because we, we, we put a, we put a square footage of our business use compared to the full, the ratio was quite small that we used. So you can see you'd want to do both of these methods because, because note that you would think that this method, because it's for the whole country might work out better if you were in a situation where you were, where uh, you're in a lower cost of living place and you have to be under the 300 square foot because if it was over 300, I think it's gonna cap it at 300. So for example, if I put this at 500 for my business use, then it still caps it at 300, right? So that's gonna be a limitation as well. And because there's different cost of livings within the country, you would think that it would be likely that if you live in a high cost of living area, it might be better to use the actual. So now that I've changed this to 500, it limited it to 300. Let's go back to the other method. I'm coming up to 1,500 here. And if I use the other method, it would we would be coming to 1,213. Uh, so let's just increase that a little bit more. Let's say it was, you know, 600, 600. And so now we're at the 1,395. 
go back on over and let's say the rent was higher. Let's say the rent was 35,000. So now we come to 2,145, right? So, so, and then if I go back on over and I say, okay, let's force the other method, which is, where's the forcer thing? Where's the forcer thing? This method, then that would still be capping me at the 1,500. So you kind of have to do, they tried to do the simplified method as if you can just pick the simplified method and go, but that actually makes it so you have to do the comparison between the two methods to try to figure out which method is the best now. So that's the general idea. You can dive into this in a lot more detail to determine, you know, how to exactly calculate the square foot and special situations like inventory, or if you have a separate structure that you, that you need to uh, get into, you can do more research on that. Or if you have a daycare facility in particular, uh, it goes into a lot more special circumstances in that particular uh, situation or industry, which is quite common, you know, business use, a type of business for the business use of the home so you can dive into those in more detail and research them on the IRS website irs.gov